Welcome to another video. Today I am going to do something a bit different. I should probably introduce myself first. Um, my name is Annabelle. I am a 28 year old artist from Victoria, Australia and today I'm doing something a little bit different and I'm gonna paint and talk to you. So I tend to talk to myself when I'm painting so I figured I may as well film it <laughs> just crop out any of the awkward spots and all of the yawning because I'm very sleepy I don't know how far I'm gonna get on this painting tonight before I lose the light but we should probably get into it so I'm gonna make a little sketch so I'm gonna decide um, I'll put a little insert of the reference picture in just so you can kind of see what I'm working with but I think I'm going to go with a fairly high horizon line because I want to focus more on the hills and the trees and the grass, not so much the sky. I'm not too fussed about composition in this one because I'm really focusing mainly on just conveying distance and practicing kind of drawing or painting hills and trees. Okay, so my palette is quite dirty so I might just give that a little wash. Um, I usually clean it with I probably don't need to use the distilled water for this, but it's just what I've got in my spray bottle, so I'll spray that. So I'm going to work with my Himi, Himi Maya gouache, I think, for this one. Let's move that keyboard out of the way. It's not very aesthetic. Um, I always tend to use the Hemi gouache in my sketchbook just because I'm not really gonna sell anything in my sketchbook so it doesn't need to be light fast and therefore I can kind of just muck around and not worry about wasting paint. I'm just gonna grab my paint. I actually, um, this is gonna go up after Christmas, this video, it's currently the 16th of December but I think this is going to be a couple weeks away this video um, I got oh, <laughs> no um, I got this set of paints for my partner's mum because she is an aspiring artist and she's a lot better than she thinks she is if you're listening to me Annette okay um so usually I would use a bigger brush to kind of lay in my washes, but I've kind of been liking having a little bit more control lately. So I'm just going to use this cheapie. This just came with the Hemi Maya gouache. I need my sponge. So I use a sponge to kind of control the water on my brush, um, mainly because you can just chuck this in the wash. You don't have to throw it away. I just feel like it's a little bit less wasteful. So I'm going to focus on the, the hills in this. So I'm just going to make the sky really basic. Now I'm still learning gouache, so I'm trying to get thinner with my initial layers of paint so that I don't keep reactivating it so much when I come back through. But um, because I'm used to, I think I've said this about a million times already, I'm used to oil paints, so this is completely new to me. All right, so I want to think more about greys than colour at this stage. I'm just going to make that sky a little bit more saturated or a little bit more um, opaque. There we go. Keep it simple is what I'm trying to do because I tend to complicate things way too much. All right, step one, sky, done. Now, I want to kind of replicate 
some of the work by um, some artists that I follow, like John Wilson, um, Warwick Fuller, both Australian artists, and then also Arthur Streeton, who was an Aussie artist back like a good hundred years ago or so. So I'm just going to grab a study that I did of one of Arthur Streeton's works a while ago. This actually wasn't a very good one. Um, I mean, looking back now, it's okay, but it didn't really convey the shape of the hill as I wanted to, but it's a good reference for the greys. So I'm going to stick this over here. All right, so let's get these hills put in. This hill is not that much further back than this one in the photo, but I think I want to push it back a little further. So I'm going to get a bit of white and a little bit of blue. A teeny teeny bit of yellow ochre just to uh, this might be a mistake maybe I feel like I want this hill I need to do a darker base but I want it to be coming towards I don't know like maybe a bit more yellowy I do like to use a lot of um, burnt sienna Already hating this painting. I think I need to. Uh, mm -mm. No, don't like it. I'm gonna go more yellow. Not a fan. Yeah, that's better. Pretty much the color of the stain, but a little warmer. Oh yeah. It probably looks the same on camera, but it's different, I promise. Let's come forward with a bit more yellow and white. I'm completely winging this, and I'm really not sure how it's going to turn out. The ground is always lighter than anything that's kind of so like your slanted surfaces and your vertical surfaces it's always lighter so I'm gonna go really pale like kind of yellowy gray I always keep some lilac on my palette just to kind of help me gray out my yellows okay what have I done here I need to lighten this fact and then desaturate it a little bit and try this again oh it's too blue too blue um the trees are definitely going to be the darkest parts so i'm going to block in the main trees i've got crimson and ultramarine blue here i'm going to desaturate that a little bit with some yellow Now my darkest, darkest mass will be this tree here, or this bush. I'm going to make it a little taller because I kind of want it to um, overlap with the hill. That's probably going to be a little big, but we'll see. And then I'm going to lighten this with lilac again. And some white to get this stand of trees in. Well, it doesn't look all that light, much lighter on camera, so I'm going to see if I can exaggerate that and maybe make it a bit more blue. That's better. So that's standard trees. I know it's literally at this stage just a rectangle and I will kind of chop into that when I come through with some thicker paint. Alright, so we have a little bit of distance going on here. I might block in um, some even lighter shapes for some of the trees on the hill. I feel like it's going to start coming together once I've done that. Um, so there's some on the top. I tend to use the same brush um, all the way through my paintings. I, t I think it's um, really just more out of convenience rather than any other reason. I am fairly 
impulsive with my painting and I tend to just like do whatever comes to mind. I feel like, yeah, I'm definitely going to need some of the sheep in here because I think, let's just put some of them in just to see. I think um, at the moment this is all looking a little bland. So these sheep are quite small compared to, you know, the trees because I think they're actually quite a bit further away. Photos really play tricks with your eyes because they make you think that everything is on one flat plane when everything is you know, going off into the distance. There is a really nice tree like here. I think I might block that in and just see where that goes. This is probably a bit too cool, this colour, but I'm just going to see what happens. This hill here actually is cooler in the photo, but I don't think that's going to communicate distance very well if I paint this hill cooler than um, the one in the background there. I really love cutting into foliage to kind of make it look more it just it just takes like something that looks really blocky and incorporates it in to the painting I think I'm gonna put a gap there that's too light but we can fix that later now if I look at this here um, I think I prefer the colors in this one this one's a bit too besides it not being the best quality um, this one is a lot more, I don't know, the colours just seem more cohesive and believable. So I think I'm going to go for this kind of thing, so I'm probably going to make these hills quite warm. Um, but I need to work on getting this area quite yellow and saturated to really bring it forward, because at the moment it's quite desaturated and pale. Now, what have we got here? This is too lello. We want some more blue and a little bit more red. I've always heard people say it's better to, that's too dark. It's better to um, mix your greens rather than use them from a tube. I guess if you're going to use them from a tube, you just really want to make sure you're um, putting in some sort of orange or red to desaturate them and just knock them back a little bit because otherwise they're just going to end up way too artificial and not believable. Because if you look at, if you look at um, nature, it's not often that you see like even one leaf that is one solid green there's usually a lot of variation in there so you've got to get that variation if you want to make a convincing green all right so I think we're getting a little bit more distance here so I'm just going to desaturate this yellow a little bit with some lilac just to push it back and get it looking a little bit like it's further away and a little bit more and some point. Some really bright yellow in the corner here. I might knock that back later because I don't want it to draw too much attention. But if we put some yellow in the front, we will kind of bring everything in the front forward. Yellow, um, I'm not an expert on color theory by any means, but yellow is the first uh, 
light particle or light wave to drop out in distance. So that's why things look bluer the further back you go. And if you push that when you're mixing your color, if you basically don't use any yellow in the background or you use like a cooler yellow or a more desaturated yellow, like a yellow ochre, you're gonna get more distance in your paintings. In theory, don't quote me. One thing Arthur Straton did in his paintings is he really played with colour, um, like with his saturation and just like some colours, just not typically what you would think to be where he where he they end up in his paintings, but they just look so good there. Um, I did a study of one of his recently and I was really happy with it. This one. So this is a study of a painting by Arthur Straton and I just love the colour and I think I actually might try to replicate this in this painting a bit more. Just, it's, mm, mwah, love it. Beautiful. Chef's kiss. When you're going from a photograph, take liberties to make shapes more interesting. If a shape isn't like boring you, either take it out completely or change it completely. It'll just make your painting so much more interesting and also keep you kind of engaged in the process. You don't want to paint things that you find boring. This just feels like a bit of a mess. I feel like I need to break it up with like a path or something. So I'm going to come in with some like grey blue because it's going to be the path is going to be obviously flat with no plants in it so it's going to be like dead set reflecting the sky so it's going to be bluer so to make this path kind of believable i need to make the grass that is kind of like abutting the path darker like there needs to be a little shadow along there again this is probably the wrong color but it's it's a start I do have coffee so this is very important. This cup is by Minna Graham who's an Australian uh, ceramicist and I've had this for quite a few years. I have mixed feelings as what I've, with what I've done with the shadows here. I've gone over the pathway. I was It was late at night when I did that. It was very spontaneous and I'm a little bit bummed. I feel like it wasn't my best decision but we will persist. I might just work on these shadows a bit. I'm going to make them more greeny blue. Don't know how I feel about that, but we will see. Now, I think maybe we need to put a bit more yellow on these hills. Gouache is like, it's really hard to manipulate. I guess like I'm fairly new, but I find it really hard to kind of manipulate. All right, so this area is lighter. I tend to find that I feel like I'm not pushing enough with the, the brights, but what it probably is, is my darks are too light. So I probably need to add some dark accents onto the trees on the hill. Mm -hmm. 
I noticed that um, Arthur Streeton, or more Edgar Payne, sorry, he does this kind of like patchwork of colors in his foreground. Like they're really just like variegated. So I feel like I want to do a bit of that kind of randomness and just see um, where it comes up. So there's a bit of warmth in between these trees. I feel like I probably need to push some more greens in here. Not to forget that all of these shapes out down the back here actually have form and I want to make sure that that's communicated. Oh I forgot my sheep! <laughs> well they'll help add some scale. I want to get some shadow, some highlights into some of these trees. I've really, really loved the combination of green and purple. I think it's such a beautiful combination. And I love like kind of using purple to convey the shadows in green areas. Probably be, it's, it'd be because of like the complementary colors. It's amazing sometimes how much colour will bring a shape forward as opposed to value. Value definitely does a big job and a lot of the reason that colour pulls something forward is because the value of that colour is lighter but overall it's just, yeah, I find it so cool how much yellow will bring something forward. I like to kind of work with um, the colors that are already in my wells to make my shadows and things like that because it just helps to create unity in the painting. I feel like I need to put more shadows back in to this area, but after that, I think it might actually be pretty close to done. So quite often I find that by taking off the tape midway through or towards the end, it helps kind of give me an indication of where I need to go. So 
So I'm gonna just come in with a really small brush and try and knock in some like yellow. This is why we paint. We paint to learn. We paint to make lots of mistakes and then go whoops and try to fix those mistakes. I feel like most of my paintings these days are made up of mistakes that I've then gone back to fix. And just like that, we have completed another painting. This one was a bit more impressionistic than I usually go for, but I'm quite happy with it. I hope you really enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, drop a comment, let me know what you want to see next time. And I will talk to you soon.